Okay, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, this is the pre-seminar and we are very happy to have our next speaker, Lucrezia Bortigoni, who is going to give us an introduction to braided monoidal categories. Please. Thank you very much for the introduction. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. And today I present an introduction to the notion of monoidal category and braided monoidal categories. And um, in the last part of this talk, uh, we will discuss an infinitesimal version of a braided monoidal category. Okay. Let's start by recalling that monoidal categories are categories which are equipped with a bifunctor that is usually called the tensor product and which is um, which is uh, <coughs> which is usually called the tensor product and this notion is first appeared in uh, um, 1963 in a paper of Jean Benabou where he called uh, the, the so-called categories with multiplication. And in the same year, the right version of monoidal category was formulated by uh, McLean in this uh, paper, where he uh, defined the uh, known triangle and pentagon axioms. Um, the most uh, fundamental example to keep in mind is the example of uh, vector spaces over a field. Um, given categories C and C prime, then we can define the product category of C with C prime, which is the category uh, which has the object, these order pairs, where the first entry X is an object in C and X prime is, a, in, is, is an object in C prime. And the morphisms are given by these order pairs, where the first morphism F is a morphism in C from X to Y. And the Second, F prime is a morphism in C prime. The identities are defined in this way, we, which uh, in each entry there is the identity and the composition is component wise. And uh, a monoidal categories, which is also called the tensor categories, is a category which is uh, endowed with uh, a functor which is denoted by this symbol and uh, which is uh, usually called the tensor product, which sends uh, any um, order pair X, Y in this object, X tensor Y, and any order pair of morphisms in these morphisms in C. Moreover, this category, the amonoidal category, is, is um, equipped with a distinguished object, which I denote by I, which is called the unit object, and the natural isomorphisms A, L, R, which are usually called the associativity or associator constraint for A. L is the left unit constraint and R is the right unit constraint, which are given on components in this uh, way. Uh, as you can see, the source of uh, um, this component of A has the bracket on the first two tensorants and the target has the bracket on the, th on the third and the second tensorants. And uh, moreover, these uh, associativity constraints are required to commute the following di diagrams. The first is called the pentagon axioms, which says that we can go from this object to these objects in two ways. First, we can apply the associator on these three objects and then the other associator on these three objects. Otherwise, we can go in the same way by applying the associator tensor identity, then the associator on these three objects, and then the identity tensor associator. The triangle axiom involves the unit object and uh, the, this triangle is commutative. And uh, in particular, these axioms say that uh, all, possible, uh, all possible diagrams obtained uh, using only the constraints are commutative. And uh, a monoidal category is called uh, strict when all the constraints A, L, R are identities. 
And uh, for instance, from the previous axioms, one can show that given a monoidal category C, then also the following triangles are uh, commutative, where we have the unit object on the third tensor and here we have the unit object as a first tensor and. And uh, moreover, uh, for any object X in C, the following equality is all true. And in particular, to see the first one, we, we know that L is natural, so we have this uh, equality. And since L is invertible, the first equality follows. Similarly, one can show the second one. And for the third, uh, this uh, follows by the previous triangle and also using the triangle uh, axioms and the invertibility and the naturality of uh, the left uh, constraint. Um, here after, I will often denote a monoidal category simply by C, tensor product, unit object, or only simply by C. Uh, some examples, uh, any monoid in the usual sense in set as a semigroup with identity can be seen as a strict monoidal category where C is the underlying set M, which is seen as a discrete category, which means that it is a category which has no non-identity arrows. And the tensor product is given by the operation of the monoid, and the unit object is given by the identity element of the monoid. Uh, moreover, given a category C, the category of end of functors from C to C is a, um, is a strict monoidal category where the tensor product is given by the composition of functors and the unit object is the identity functor. Another example, the category set of sets is a monoidal where the tensor product is given by the usual Cartesian product. The unit object is the one point set this is singleton, and the constraints are defined in this way, as you can see, for all x, y, z in set. Um, another example, the category of abelian groups is monoidal, which uh, uh, through the same monoidal structure as in set, but in this case, uh, the um, Cartesian product X with uh, Y is the direct product of, uh, of groups, and the unit object has the trivial uh, group structures and the constraints are group homomorphism. And more generally, uh, if C is a category with finite products, then uh, C is a monoidal category where the tensor product is a chosen binary product um, and uh, the unit object is the terminal object in C, which means that uh, for every other object X in C, there is only one morphism from X to one. And the constraints arise from the canonical isomorphisms given by the universal properties. And such a monoidal structure is uh, called Cartesian. For instance, set and abelian groups are Cartesian monoidal categories. Um, if you take a ring, a commutative ring, K, the category of K modules is a monoidal category where the tensor product is given by the usual tensor product over the ring K. The unit object is the ring K, and the constraints are defined in this way. And as a particular case, if K is the ring of integers, we get the monoidal category of abelian groups. But this time, as a tensor product, we have the tensor product over Z. And as a unit object, we have the ring of integer. So a monoidal category can, uh, can have different monoidal structures. And uh, if K is a field K, we have uh, the well-known monoidal category of uh, K vector spaces. And uh, some other examples, uh, the category of uh, K algebras is a monoidal category where uh, the tensor product and the constraints are defined as in back. And uh, uh, here, uh, for instance, if we take two K algebras, then their tensor product is a K algebra via this multiplication and this unit. 
Similarly, if we take the category of coalgebras over K, then this is a, a monoidal categories. And if we take um, two coalgebras, C and D, then their tensor product is a K coalgebra via this co-multiplication and this co-unit, where uh, here we are using the Swidler notation. And if we take uh, H, a bialgebra over a field K, then the category of left modules over H is monoidal with the same monoidal structure as in VEC. And this time, the unit object K is a left H module via the trivial action given by the co-unit of H. And uh, moreover, the tensor product of two um, H left uh, modules, X, Y, they are, the tensor product is a left H module via the diagonal action given in this way. And uh, similarly, if we take the category of left H co-modules, this category is monoidal with the same monoidal structure as in VEC. And the unit object is, uh, can be seen as a left H co-module via the trivial correction, given in this way. And the tensor product, product of two uh, H left uh, co-modules is given uh, as this structure, the, the so-called diagonal coaction. Okay, uh, whenever we have two monoidal categories, we can define a proper notion of functor between monoidal categories. A functor is said to be monoidal or lax monoidal if um, it consists of a functor f from c to c prime, a morphism phi zero from the unit object of the target category to the image uh, through f of the unit object of the source category, hi, this is a morphism in C prime, and the natural transformation phi 2, which is given uh, on components in this way, such that the following diagrams are commutative. Here uh, we have uh, the um, compatibility with the, the associator and in these two squares appear uh, the phi zero and uh, the unit object. Moreover, if phi zero and phi two are invertible, then F is uh, called a strong monoidal functor. If phi zero and phi two uh, are identities, then uh, F is called a strict monoidal functor. And uh, moreover, um, one can also give uh, the definition of monoidal equivalence, which is uh, as a monoidal functor, which is uh, a, an equivalence of categories. And by reversing the arrows, one can get the definition of uh, monoidal functor. And uh, a monoidal natural transformation from uh, two uh, monoidal functors F and G is a natural transformation from F to G, which satisfies in addition um, um, the fact that these two diagrams are commutative for all X, Y, in C. Uh, some uh, observations, monoidal categories uh, form a two categories where the objects are monoidal categories, the one cells are given by monoidal functors, and the two cells are given by the monoidal natural transformations. And there is an important result known as MacLean coherence theorem, which states that any monoidal category is categorically equivalent to a strict monoidal category. But when one works with the specific examples, it is important to take care of the constraints. Uh, some examples, the forgetful functor from the category of abelian groups to set, uh, equipped with uh, the map phi zero uh, from the one point set to uh, Z, which sends zero in the unit in, in, in one on, uh, of, uh, of uh, the ring in, of integers, and the psi two is given all, on components in this way, then this is an example of a monoidal functor which is not strong. Another example, if we take a morphism of bialgebras, then the restriction of scalar functors attached to the module categories is an example of a strict monoidal functor. 
And uh, just a comment, the classical notion of uh, monoid, which is a semigroup with identity, can be described as a set equipped uh, with two functions, M for the multiplication and U for the unit, which uh, um, make the following diagrams commute, where here LM and RM are the canonical bijections. This diagram on elements can be uh, read as, as follows. Here, for the first one, we can see the associativity of a monoid. And here, we have the property of the unit element for a monoid. So the notion of a monoid can be defined in an arbitrary monoidal category in this way. If we take a monoidal category, a monoid or algebra in C, is a term A, M, U, where A is an object in C, which is endowed uh, with two morphisms, the multiplication, M, and the unit, U, such that these two diagrams are commutative. The first one is the associativity law, and the second are the left and right unit laws. A morphism between two monoids in C is a monoid morphism if um, F is uh, compatible with the multiplications in this way and with the units in this way. Moreover, monoids in C and their morphism are uh, a category which is uh, usually denoted by mon C or mon C tensor unit object. And by reversing the arrows, one can get the definition of comonoid and comonoid morphism. Um, an observation if we have a monoidal functor between two monoidal categories, then F induces a functor uh, between the uh, category of uh, monoids in C and the category of monoids in C prime. Here is a misprint is C prime. Okay, some examples. Um, the monoid in a set are the usual monoid. The monoid in the category of abelian groups is the category of rings. The monoid in the category of endofunctors is the category of monads over C. The monoid in the category of vector spaces over a field K is the category of K algebras. The comonoid in the category of vector spaces is the category of K coalgebras. The monoid in the category of K algebras is the category of commutative K algebras. The monoid in the category of K coalgebras is the category of bialgebras over K. And this is also uh, are the comonoid in the category of K algebras. Uh, moreover, if we have a fixed bialgebra H over a field K, a monoid in the category of uh, left H modules is a left H module algebra, which is a K algebra with a left H module structure, which satisfies these uh, two equalities. And similarly, a monoid in the category of uh, left H comodules is a left H comodule algebra, which is a K algebra with a left H comodule structure, which satisfies these two equalities. And uh, in a um, in order to um, uh, define the notion of uh, Brady, before define the notion of uh, Brady the monoidal categories, let me see that uh, le le let me say that uh, in a monoidal category, tensor products are not uh, in general uh, commutative. For instance, uh, if we think uh, at the category of end of functors, the tensor product is the composition, which is not uh, usually commutative. And, uh, and the same up happens for for instance, in the category of vector spaces for the tensor product over K. But uh, as in the category of, of, of vector spaces, if we think at the canonical flip, sometimes natural isomorphisms exist. Uh, so um, the notion of braided monoidal category was introduced by Street and Joyal, and Joyal in 1986, but uh, the notion of commutative isomorphism already appeared in the first paper of um, McLean that, that I show in the first slide. And uh, okay, we have a monoidal category. We can consider the flip functor, 
which sends an order pair xy to the order pair yx. Abrading for C is a natural isomorphism C sigma, uh, which is given uh, on components in this way. And uh, the components are isomorphisms, which are natural in X and Y, and they satisfy the, ax the hexagon axiom, which means that these two diagrams are commutative. And a braided monoidal category is a monoidal category with a braiding. And when the monoidal category is in particular strict, then the hexagon axiom reduces to the two equations. And if sigma is a braiding in C, then so is its inverse, sigma minus one. Uh, note that in the first, in the second, Axiom. The second axioms can be found from the first one, uh, replacing sigma with uh, sigma minus one. And uh, if in addition, uh, the inverse of sigma is equal to sigma, which means that the sigma is involutive, then sigma is said to be a symmetry. This uh, notion appeared in a paper of uh, Heilenberg and Kelly. And in this case, the category C is, is called symmetric monoidal. A braided monoidal functor between braided monoidal categories is Sorry, a Sorry, can functor. I ask you a quick question? So, yes. um, so we see that if we have a uh, braiding, then also um, sigma minus one is a braiding. Uh, my question is, so are odd powers of sigma also braidings? I think in general not, but maybe if you ask uh, something extra, is it known that you can build more braidings from odd powers of sigma? Uh, you mean uh, sigma n, for instance? Sigma to the power three, let's say. Is it a braiding? Uh, is, this, is this known or? I, I don't know. I think, uh, yes, should be. I mean, I don't think that it's a braiding. I um, think something might go wrong, but maybe for some subclass of braided monoidal categories, this might happen. So mm, maybe but yes. You don't know. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And uh, yes, a braided monoidal functor between uh, braided monoidal categories is a monoidal functor such that uh, this diagram is uh, commutative and here appears uh, the two braidings. And uh, moreover, uh, from the previous ax hexagon axioms, one can show that uh, this uh, three equality holds and using also the triangle axiom of a monoidal category. And uh, moreover, also this diagram commutes, where here uh, we have the braiding sigma and the associator alpha. And uh, in particular, this diagram can be seen as a categorical version of uh, the quantum Young-Baxter equation. In fact, if uh, C is a strict uh, monoidal, then the commutativity of the previous diagram reduces to this uh, equation, which uh, implies that uh, for any x in C, the natural isomorphism sigma xx is a solution of, uh, of the known quantum Young-Baxter equation. Uh, some examples, as I have already said, the category of vector spaces over a field K is braided monoidal with the canonical flip. And the flip is also a braiding for the categories of uh, left modules over a group algebra. And um, also for um, the category of left mod a, a modules over um, a co-commutative by algebra A. And uh, moreover, um, another example, let uh, H be a op algebra over um, a field K, then the category of uh, yetter Dreamfeld modules over H is braided monoidal with its braiding, which involves the um, coaction and the action. And uh, okay, uh, one um, we have seen before that one can define the notion of uh, monoid in a monoidal categories, but uh, to define the notion, in order to define the notion of a bimonoid, we need the braiding. In fact, uh, given a braided monoidal category C, a bimonoid in C 
is uh, this uh, datum where B M U is a monoid in C and B delta epsilon is a comonoid in C and the two structures are compatible in the following way, which means that the, these four diagrams are commutative. And here we can see that uh, the braiding appears. And the uh, amorphism of uh, B monoids in C is a amorphism of monoids and uh, comonoids. And uh, moreover, um, one can denote the category of uh, B monoids in, in this way in C. And for instance, the B monoids in back is uh, the usual category of by algebras over K. And uh, one can also define the notion of uh, op monoid in C. Uh, let's take a monoid in C and a comonoid in C. Define the convolution product of two morphism Fg in this way. An op monoid in C is a B monoid, which is equipped with a morphism S, which plays the role of the antipod in the classical case, such that we have these equalities. And a morphism of op monoids is a morphism of B monoids, such that we have, uh, moreover, this uh, compatibility with the antipodes. And uh, the category of, of uh, op monoids in C uh, is denoted in this way, and the op monoids in back are the usual op algebras over K. Another quick question for these morphisms. Yes. So, um, like for a bi algebra morphism, um, or no, differently. So if you have um, two Hopf algebras and a bi-algebra morphism between them, then it's automatic that it intertwines the antipodes. Um, is the same true for these Hopf monoids or is this only working in category of vector spaces? Uh, you have to require this condition. You So you say it's not automatic? Uh... No, DD is part of the definition, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, and um, okay, now um, let's take a bi-algebra over a field K. Uh, one can ask, when is the monoidal category of left H modules over H um, braided? And uh, to answer this uh, question, uh, quasi-triangular bi-algebras were introduced by um, Dringfeld. And before giving the definition of quasi-triangular structure, uh, let me say that we denote an element um, T in H tensor A in this way. And uh, we adopt also the leg notation T12 is T tensor 1 of H and so on. A bi-algebra H is said to be quasi-triangular if there is an invertible element, R, in H tensor H, which is called the universal R, metric, uh, R matrix, which is uh, uh, quasi-commutative, which means that this uh, equality holds, and these two hexagon equations hold holds. If in addition the inverse of R is uh, the flip of R, then H is called triangular. And uh, moreover, R satisfies the so-called quantum Young-Baxter equations. This follows by the, from the hexagon axioms. And uh, as an example, if we take a co-commutative uh, by algebras, which means that the delta is uh, equal to the flip of the delta, then uh, with um, <coughs> then this by algebra is triangular with uh, the trivial universal R matrix one tensor one. For instance, this happens for any group uh, algebra. And there is a uh, um, bijection between the quasi triangular structures over by algebra H and the uh, braided structures over the category of uh, left H modules and the braiding is uh, defined in this way where here we have the flip of the quasi triangular structure R moreover the category is symmetric monoidal if and only if the quasi triangular structure over H is uh, triangular and uh, here is just a sketch of the proof. If we take a quasi-triangular bi-algebra, then uh, by the quasi-commutativity of R, it follows that uh, sigma uh, 
uh, on components mn is left h linear for every mn uh, um, left h modules and the hexagon equations of r imply the hexagon axiom for a sigma and the inverse of sigma can be defined in this way Conversely, if we assume that the category is braided with some braided sigma, then one can define the quasi-triangular structure for H in this way as the flip of the sigma HH evaluated in one tensor one. And uh, the hexagon axiom of sigma implies the hexagon relations for R and the H linearity of sigma HH implies the quasi-commutativity of R. And uh, moreover, one can define the inverse of R in this way, and the triangular um, case is equivalent to require that the sigma day braiding is involved. And um, recently, in collaboration with uh, Alessandro Ardizzoni, Andrea Chandra, and Thomas Weber, we have uh, introduced uh, an infinitesimal version of braided uh, monoidal categories. We have defined a braided precartier category to be a preadditive braided monoidal categories, uh, together with a natural transformation, T, which satisfy these two identities and which holds for all object X, Y, Z in C. These identities can be seen as an infinitesimal version of the hexagon axioms for the braiding, and we have called T an infinitesimal braiding. And uh, moreover, a pre-Cartier category is called the Cartier if in addition this uh, equality holds uh, true. If uh, sigma star is the identity, uh, we call uh, the category a symmetric pre-Cartier or Cartier category. Some comments, every pre-additive pre uh, braided monoidal category is Cartier through the trivial infinitesimal braiding given by the braiding with zero uh, on all components. If we set y equal to i, the unit object here, we get that txi is zero and tix is zero. And uh, moreover, in the case of a symmetric monoidal category, um, in presence of this axiom, 6, then the conditions for N5 are equivalent. And as a consequence, our notion of a symmetric Cartier category is the same as the, as the notion uh, which goes back to the paper of uh, Cartier in 1993. And this notion is also called infinitesimal symmetric category in the Castle book, in case C is a strict monoidal category. And uh, here I have uh, summarized uh, the, um, the terminologies. And uh, moreover, um, if we have a strong monoidal factor between preadditive category C and uh, C prime, if uh, um, assume um, in addition that F is additive and fully faithful, it is known, it is a classical result that if C prime has a braiding structure, then so does C, the source target, the, 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 the source category, and F is a braided strong monoidal functor. Moreover, this um, correspondence also, also for the Precartier staff. In fact, if C prime has a natural transformation T, which uh, fulfills the 4 and 5 equation, then also so does C, and the same upset for the last axiom C. And uh, the precartier categories as a correspondent um, algebraic uh, structure. We have defined a uh, quasi triangular by algebra to be precartier if there is an element h in, in a, i in h tensor h such that these three axioms hold. We have called chi an infinitesimal R, R matrix. And uh, moreover, uh, we have called um, a by algebra quasi triangular. Cartier, if it is pre-Cartier with uh, an infinitesimal uh, armetric sky, which satisfy moreover this uh, equality. And uh, some uh, quick comments. Every quasi-triangular by algebra is Cartier with uh, the trivial chi equals zero. And uh, the set of infinitesimal matrices for a quasi-triangular by algebra is a vector space. And uh, given a by algebra, 
If R tilde is a quasi triangular structure on the trivial topological by algebra associated to H, uh, then R is a quasi triangular structure on H. In particular, uh, since R is invertible, we can write R tilde in this way, uh, where K is an element in H tensor H, and by reading the defining axioms of R tilde, the quasi triangular structure, in the first order of uh, H, we get exactly the axioms that defines an infinitesimal hermetic, uh, hermetic uh, chi. This was uh, the motivating examples. And here are some other examples. Uh, for instance, if H is uh, commutative, then chi is an infinitesimal hermetic if and only if chi is in the imprimitive tensor primitive of the by algebra H. Or for the Swedler, it did, for instance, uh, if we take the group algebra with G abelian group, then k is zero since its primitive are zero. And another example for the Swedler of, of algebras, which is a four dimensional of algebras given by generators G and X modulo these three relations. It is an of algebras with these co algebra structures. And uh, moreover, it has uh, an infinitesimal, uh, it has a one parameter family of triangular structures given by this R uh, lambda. And uh, moreover, we have proved that there is um, an exhaustive one parameter family of infinitesimal matrices on the Swedler uh, of algebras, which has uh, this form. And uh, moreover, the Swedler is Cartier only with the trivial uh, chi. I don't know how much how much time I have. Let me just mention that uh, there is uh, also uh, if you by can direction wrap it up in the next uh, two minutes. This would be perfect. Thank you. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Uh, there is a, a bijection between pre-Cartier structure on quasi-triangular by algebras and the pre-Cartier um, uh, pre structures for the category of left H uh, modules. And in this case, the infinitesimal braiding T can be defined in this way using uh, chi. And on the, on the other end, uh, given an infinitesimal braiding T on the left H modules, one can define chi in this way and verify that uh, all the axioms. Okay, here are just some uh, results. If we have a Bayer algebra map, F, and if H is a pre-Cartier quasi-triangular Bayer algebra, then also its uh, image, FH, is a pre-Cartier by algebra through this uh, uh, infinitesimal matrix. And um, as a consequence, this applies, uh, for instance, if we take uh, a pre-Cartier quasi-triangular by algebra with uh, I, a B ideal of H, then uh, also the quotient by algebra is pre-Cartier. And uh, moreover, if we take two quasi-triangular by algebras, we know that uh, is a classical result that the tensor product is quasi-triangular to this uh, uh, universal matrix. R tilde. Then if at least one of H or H prime is pre-Cartier, then so is also the tensor product with a chi defined in this way. And uh, okay, I think, uh, let me just mention that an infinitesimal chi is an oxyl to cocycle and it satisfies an infinitesimal quantum young baxter equation. Uh, okay, uh, here are some references, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, maybe there are some questions. Someone has a question from the audience here. Uh, maybe from the Zoom people. So if you have a question, simply unmute yourself and ask the question. Maybe I have a quick one. Like, um, so if you have a braiding, you were saying that the hexagons, they imply quantum Young-Baxter. Um, is uh, the yes. inverse also true? Like if you show quantum Young-Baxter, does this give you the hexagons? Uh, okay. 
here you have the quantum young Baxter. Right. So this is a consequence of the hexagons, right? Yes, in yes, in particular it's a consequence of this dodecado axiom. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if the converse is also true that if you have quantum young Baxter, does this imply the hexagons? Uh yes, it's true. Right, okay, nice. Okay. I I think Paolo, please, no. if you have a question, go for it. More than a question is a curiosity. Do you mind to go back to slide number 24, please? Okay. In yes. your, yeah, wonderful. In your second example, you say that if H is commutative by algebra, then 7 is trivially satisfied. Yes, so, 7 is the first axiom. Uh, delta chi equal chi delta. Okay. And uh, is this strictly related to the commutative setting? I mean, if kg is a Hopf algebra over an arbitrary group, not necessarily an abelian one, can yeah. you do something similar in general or not? Or it's really... Uh, you know, uh, for an abelian, it is uh, co-commutative. So you can say... Uh, for an KG, for instance, with the um, trivial universal hermetics, one tensor one. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Okay. And so it was this. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Absolutely fine. Thanks. No more questions. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.